I am Poseidon, the sea god. I come up from the salt sea depths of the Aegean, where sea nymphs trace arabesques on the ocean's floor. I built the towers of stone around the town of Troy, Apollo with me, and straight we raised them, true by line and plummet. Goodwill for them has never left my heart, my Trojans, and the city. City, now only smoke, all is gone, perish beneath Greek spears. A horse was fashioned with the help of Athena. It was loaded with armed warriors in its hollow belly and sent through the gates, it carried death. The wooden horse, so men will call it always, held and hid these spears, a desert now where groves were. Blood drips down from the god's shrines. Beside his hearth Priam, king of Troy, lies dead upon the altar steps of Zeus, the hearth's protector. While to the Greek ships pass the Trojan treasure, gold, golden masses, armor, clothing stripped from the dead. The Greeks, who long since brought war to the town, 10 times the seed was sown before Troy fell. Wait now for a fair wind for home, the joyful sight of wife and child again. Myself defeated by the Argive goddess Hera and by Athena, both in league together. I too must take my leave, forsake my altars. Troy is burnt to bitter ashes now. Yesterday, her rivers ran with blood. Today, they are flooded with women's tears. Though Greek masters drew lots for them, some will go to Arcady, some will go to Thessaly, some to the lords of Athens, Theseus' sons. Huts here hold others spared the lot, but destined for the great captains. With them, like them, a captive of the spear, the Spartan woman, Helen. But if a man were to look on misery, it is here to see. Hecuba lies there. She weeps. Many tears for many griefs, but one grief still hidden from her. Just now, upon Achilles' grave, her daughter was killed, Polexena. So patiently she died. Gone also Hecuba's husband, gone her sons, all dead. One daughter, whom the Lord Apollo loved, yet spared her wild virginity, Cassandra, Agamemnon in the dark will force upon his bed no thought for what was holy and was God's. O oh, city happy once, farewell. Shining towers crumbling down now beneath Athena's hand, the child of Zeus. Or you would still stand firm on deep foundations. Am I allowed to speak to one who is my father's nearest kinsman, a god among gods honored powerful? If I put enmity aside, will he? He will, most high Athena. What binds the gods outlives these mortal quarrels? Thanks for your gentleness. What I would say touches us both, great king. A message from the gods, a word from Zeus, some spirit, surely. No one sent me. I come on behalf of Troy. I seek your power to join mine own with it. <laughs> what now? At long last, that long hatred for Troy? To the point, first, please. Will you make common cause with me? What I wish done, will you wish too? Gladly. But what you wish, I first must know. You come to me for Troy's sake or for Greece. I wish to make my Trojan foes rejoice and give the Greeks a bitter homecoming. The way you change from love to hate and back again, no limit ever. The Greeks went too far. They desecrated my temple. Oh, that, when Ajax dragged Cassandra out. And not one Greek to punish him, not one to blame him. 
Your protégés, my dear, you, you let them loose on Troy. That was yesterday. Today I seek their ruin with help from you. I'm ready for all you wish, but what exactly did you have in mind? A homecoming in which fish share their beds. Here, you mean, or, or out on the salt sea. Soon? Now? Whenever the ships sail, Zeus will blind them with rain and unforgiving winds. He will blacken the noon. He will give me, he has promised, his thunderbolt to strike them with fire. They shall burn. Your part to make your sea roads roar, wild waves and whirlwinds rack the archipelago and stuff the hollow of Cape Hell with corpses. So the Greeks shall learn to reverence my home and dread all gods. Done. So many words for one small favor. I will stir the sea, the wide Aegean. Shores and reefs and cliffs will hold dead men, bodies of many dead. Off to Olympus with you now and get those fiery arrows from the hand of Zeus. Then, when the Greeks, when a fair wind sends the Greeks to sea, Watch the ship sail. The man's a fool who levels cities and makes a desert of holy ground, never knowing his turn can be next. Up from the ground, Hecuba. This is no longer Troy, and you are not the darling of the gods, after all. Endure. The ways of fate are the ways of the wind. Drift with the stream, drift with fate. No use to turn the prow to breast the waves. Let the boat go as it chances. Sorrow, my sorrow. What sorrow is there that is not mine? Country lost, children, husband, the glory of all my house brought low. All was nothing, nothing always. Keep silent, speak, weep then. Why, for want? This bed, it is very hard, my back pressed up to it. My sides, my brows, my temples up. Quick, quick, I must move. Rock my body this way and that way to the song of weeping, sound of tears dropping down forever. The song no feet will dance to ever. Oh, ships, O oh, prows, swift oars out from the fair Greek bays and harbors over the dark, shining sea. You made your way to our holy city. And then the fearful music of war was heard. The war song sung to flute and pipe as you cast on the shore your cables braided in Egypt where they worship the dead and know the underworld. What did you come for? A woman, a thing of loathing and shame to husband, brother's home. She slew Priam the king, father of fifty sons, and she wrecked me on the reef of destruction. Who am I that wait at a Greek king's door, a slave that men drive on, an old gray woman brought low in dishonor? O oh, wives of the bronze-armored men who fought, and maidens, sorrowing maidens, plighted to shame, see here, only smoke where once was Troy. Let us weep for her. As a mother bird cries to her feathered brood, so will I cry. Once another song I sang as I leaned on Priam's scepter, and the beat of dancing feet marked the music's measure. Up to the gods, 
the song of Troy rose at my signal. We hear you, Hecuba, sobbing. Fear stabs at my heart. I suffer over my own slavery. Look there, child, there, where the Greek ships lie. They are moving. The men hold oars. God, what will they do? Carry me off over the sea in a ship far from home? You ask, and I know nothing, but I think ruin is here. Women of Troy, get ready. There's worse to come. Empty your household into a square of cloth. The sea rises, and the Greek ships look to Halas. Do not waken Cassandra. She is mad. She has been driven mad. To see the Greeks mock her madness would wound me even more. Oh, Troy, unhappy Troy, we leave you. We, the unhappy, we who are living and we who are dead. Out of Agamemnon's stand trembling I come, O oh queen, to hear my fate from you. Not death. They will not think of death for a poor woman. Has a herald come from the Greek camp? Whose slave shall I be? Wait for the lot drawing. It is near. Will I shiver in some mountain pass in Thessaly? Or labor on some prison rock far from Troy's warm sand? No. This is not to be borne. To what end of the earth will I be flung? In my great age, not worth my hide as a slave? Hands too gnarled to hold a bucket, nerveless as a statue, insubstantial as the dead, to watch a master's door, to no. nurse his children. <laughs> Once I was queen in Troy. No, 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 you are our hope, you are our shield against despair. Your outburst now confirms our doom. The shuttle will still pass through my hand. But the loom will not be in Troy. I feel my children's face has lost me. Take me, if it's out of my hands, to Athens, where the king at least protects the weak, and the mainland is said to be safe for travel. Take me, if I must go, to an eternal city whose walls will never fail. My toils will only multiply. I imagine drawing water from Corinth's holy spring all day, praying for a night of pitch dark in which I'll lie unseen in a bed of strangers. Keep me far from the sun-baked plain where Eurotas flows, where Helen lived. In the foam of that river, the swan took a lover. We know the daughter. Menelaus walked those watery meadows, content with his kingdom, before he sacked Troy. They say there is a fat land under Olympus. The foothills are gold with harvest wheat. That would be my second prayer. If not to Athens, send me there. They say a river of fire that runs in the west bore an island, Sicily, where herald shouts ring out as victors cross the line and grapes burst in the lower slopes and Hephaestus works his forts, gazing towards Tyre. It lays in the root the sailors love, a safe harbor in the middle of the sea. I'd go where the river is of torchlit light, red-flecked chestnut, streaming with wealth, blessing the crop of strong men. But now I see a man from the Greek army, a herald. How crisp the rhythm of his stride. What will he say? Only Greek slaves are here to take orders. You know me, Hecuba. Often have I come to Troy from the Greek camp with messages. Tell Thibius, these many years you've known me, I bring you news. It has come, women of Troy. Once we only feared it. The lots are drawn if that's what you feared. Who? Where? Thessaly, Thea, Thebes? A different man takes each. You're not to go together. Then which takes which? Has anyone good fortune? I know. But ask about each one, not all at once. My daughter. Who drew her? Cassandra. She has had so much to bear. King Agamemnon drew her. He chose her out of all. 
Of course, to serve his Spartan wife, Clytemnestra. No, for the king's own bed at night. No, never. She is God's, a virgin always. This was God's gift to her for all her life. He loved her for that same strange purity. Throw away, daughter, the keys of the temple. Take off the wreath. It's firewood now. Rend the robe of ceremony. Well, now, a king's own bed is not so bad. My other daughter you took just now. Polyxena, you mean? Her. Or someone else? Her who drew her. They took her off to watch Achilles' tomb. To watch a tomb? My daughter? Is that a Greek custom? What strange new ritual is that, my friend? Just think of her as happy. All is well with her. Those words, why do you speak like that? She is alive? What happened was, well, she is free from trouble. Hector, my Hector, wise in war, had a wife, Andromache. Who gets her now? Achilles' son took her. He drew her out. I have a riddle for you. Who goes on three legs at evening? What happens to her? Odysseus will be her man. Mm. Death would be a better lord. There's nothing good he does not hurt. The law has bound me to a lawless man. No, not a man, but a thing that hisses with more coils than a serpent. A born sophist, a rhetorician that writes wrongs and wrongs rights. It's all one to him, this master of opposition. No end to my fall. Inscribe this on my tomb. Hecuba was born, she lived, she died in misfortune. You know what lies before you, queen. But what man among the Greeks owns me? Bring Cassandra here, you fellows. Be quick. We must give it to the chief. Deliver her to his very hands. Women, you belong to other men. Hymen! Oh, Hymen! Blessed the bridegroom. Blessed am I to lie with a king in a king's bed in Argos. Hymen! Oh, Hymen! Mother! You weep tears for my father dead, mourning for the beloved country lost. I, for my bridal here, look to the dawn, to the splendor, to you, O oh, Hymen! <laughs> Queen of night, give your starlight to a virgin bed, as of old you did. Fly, dancing feet, up with the dance, O oh, joy, O oh, joy. Dance for my father dead, most blessed to die. Oh, holy dance. Apollo, you will lead on then. There in the laurel grove, I served your altar. <laughs> well, dance, mother, come, keep step with me. Dear feet with my feet, tracing the measure this way and that. Sing to the marriage god, O oh, joyful song. Sing for the bride too, joyously all. Come, all you fair maidens in your long flowing gowns and dance for Cassandra, soon to be wed. Her god has departed. King warms her bed. Queen, quick, reel in your daughter before her frenzy lands her straight into enemy's child, hands. Child, <laughs> Such great hopes once I had. Never to your bridal bed did I think Greek spears would drive you. Your sufferings, my child, have never taught you wisdom. You never change. Your marriage bed needs no songs, but only tears. Mother, crown me with conquest's bloody wreath and celebrate this royal match. I want this marriage. If your proud heart breaks, so be it. If oracles can be trusted, then my marriage to Agamemnon shall be even bloodier than Helen's. Agamemnon the Great, the glorious Lord of Greece. 
I shall kill him, mother. Lay his house as low as he laid ours. Make him pay for all he made my father suffer, brothers and... But no, you'll hear no more of this from me. No hymns for the axe. My name is on it too. Somewhere they are wetting the blade. But you'll hear no more of this from me. All, all because he married me and so pulled his own house down. But I will show you. This town now, yes, mother, is happier than the Greeks. I know that I am mad, but mother, now, for this one time, I stand at some distance from my ecstasy. I do not rave. These men who hunted a single woman because of a single goddess's passion have laid multitudes waste. Their king, so wise, has sacrificed what he cherished most in the name of what he most hated, trading a beloved daughter's life for a sea wind to Troy. And why? To get him back a woman who had fled because she wished, not forced, to go. Their fields, their towns had not been violated. But the Greeks, who were cut down on our riverbank, went to their deaths in a strange land. Those whom war took never saw their children. No wife with gentle hands shrouded them for their grave. And in their homes are sorrows too, the very same. Lonely women who died, old men who waited for sons that never came, no son left to them to make the offering at their grave. That was the glorious victory they won. But we, we Trojans, died to save our people. No glory greater. All those the spear slew, friends bore them home and wrapped them in their shroud with dutiful hands. The earth of their own land covered them. The rest, through the long days they fought, had wife and child at hand, not like the Greeks whose joys were far away. And Hector's pain, your Hector, mother, hear me. This is the truth. He died the best, a hero. Because the Greeks came, he died thus. Had they stayed home, we never would have known him. This truth stands firm. The wise will fly from war, but if war comes, to die well is to win the victor's crown. The only shame is not to die like that. So mother, do not pity Troy or me upon my bridal bed. Now if Apollo hadn't driven you out of your mind, I would have made you regret those evil words. Bad omen, my general sailing soon. The great, who seem so wise, have no more sense than those who rank as nothing. Our king, the first in Greece, bows down before this mad girl, loves her, chooses her out of all. Wow, I'm a poor man, but I'd not go to bed with her. Now you, you know your mind's not quite right, so all you said against Greece and for Troy I never heard. The wind blew it away. Come with me to the ship now. A grand match for our general shears. A strange sort of slave, surely. Heralds, such men are called. Hated by all, for they are tyrants' tools. You say my mother goes to serve Odysseus. But what about Apollo's prophecy made clear to me? His oracle revealed she would die here in Troy. And that riddle of his words foretold still more in a future too grotesque to utter. Odysseus is ignorant of what he must now undergo. When he has added 10 years to the years spent toiling here, and arrives home alone, he will look back on this Trojan war as a golden age. He knows nothing of the narrow passage between two rocks, the cliff where Charybdis dwells, nor the Cyclops who keeps to the mountains and eats raw flesh, nor of Circe on the Ligurian coast who reduces men to swine, nor of the ships wrecked in mid-sea 
nor the sacred cattle of the sun whose bleeding flesh will one day cry out in a language to make his own flesh crawl. And to shorten this odyssey, once he has escaped the sea's jaws, he will descend alive into Hades. And when he returns, he will find more troubles at home than he could have imagined. But why let fly one more word of his labors? Come, let us hasten to my marriage. My bridegroom awaits me in Hades. Agamemnon, to match your vileness, you will be offered a vile night burial. Far from the light, you who fancy yourself a leader and a man of great deeds. My body will be hurled into a deep ravine naked for the beasts to tear, and rough winter torrents will wash it. There I, Apollo's priestess, will lie unburied beside my bridegroom's grave. Fall from my head now, emblems I wore to delight you. Apollo, my god of ecstasy, my prophet, gone are my festival days. Go, I tear these strands from my body and cast them to the winds to carry them to you, my God, my oracle. Where is the general ship anchored? How do I go on board? You won't have to wait any longer for a breeze to fill the sails to carry me away from this land. A single fury flying to avenge three deaths. Rejoice for me. Mother, do not weep. Farewell, dear city. Brothers, in Troy's earth laid. My father, a little time, and I am with you. You dead, I shall come to you a victor, those ruined by my hand that ruined us. The queen, she has fallen. Someone take her hand and I'll leave her on the ground. Let me be. Kindness not wanted is unkindness. I cannot stand. Too much is on me. Oh, you cloud-riding gods. I once thought of you as allies. Still here I call upon you when mortal fortune turns to misfortune, some dignity still clings to prayer. Can I still raise my spirit singing of the days when I, as queen, lived well in this my song of departure? Yesterday's joy vexes today's sorrow. From royalty we came into royalty we married, and from this union brought forth shining sons, whose qualities made them amazing above all other Trojans, men no other woman, Trojan or Greek, could boast of bearing. My sons I saw being cut down, and for their father Priam, who planted this crop in me, I wept. News of his death did not come to me by messenger, but with these very eyes I saw him slaughtered 
at the palace altar. I saw my city taken. I saw my daughters, whom I'd reared for worthy marriages, wrested from my hands and given to other men, and there is no chance we will ever meet again. And now the end. No more can lie beyond. In what should have been my great good time, I will be brought to Greece as a slave. They will set me to tasks these aching bones are loath to perform. The door to shut and open, bowing low. They will have Hecuba, mother to Hector, grind meal for their meals. I, who descended from the high beds of kings, will lay my sore flesh and torn back and wrinkled flesh on the hard floors for the rest of my remaining nights. My torn flesh will be wrapped in rags, disgraceful to the body of a woman who was once happy and prosperous, and all this misery and all to come because a man desired a woman. Oh, Cassandra, who knew God's mystery and joy, what strange chance has lost you your virginity? And Polyxena, Polyxena, where are you? Of all my many sons and daughters, who can help me now? Why lift me up? What hope is there to hold to? This slave that once went delicately in Troy, take her and cast her on her bed of clay with rocks for her pillow, there to fall and die wasted with tears. Count no man happy, however prosperous before he dies. Sing me, O Muse, a song for Troy, a strange song sung to tears, a music for the grave. O lips, sound forth a melody for Troy, a four-wheel cart, but a horse to the gates, brought ruin to me, captured, enslaved me. Gold was the rein and the bridle, deadly the arms within, and that gold face plate rumbled like thunder from earth to heaven as the threshold was passed. High on Troy's rock the people cried, Rest at last, trouble ended, bring the carven image in, bear it to Athena, fit gift for the child of God. Who of the young beheld forth, who of the old will stay at home? With song and rejoicing, they brought death in, treachery and destruction. All that were in Troy, hastening to the gate, drew that smooth, plain horse of wood carved from a mountain pine. Where the Greeks were hiding, where was Troy's destruction? They gave it to the goddess, gift for her, the virgin, driver of the steeds that never die. With ropes of twisted flax, as the ship's dark hull is drawn to land, they brought it to her temple of stone to her floor that soon would run with blood to Pallas Athena. On their toil and their joy, the dark of evening fell, but the lutes of Egypt still rang out to the songs of Troy. And girls with feet, as light as air, dancing sung happy songs. The houses blazed with light through the dark splendor, and sleep was not. I was among the dancers. I was singing to the maiden of Zeus, the goddess of the hills. A shout rang out in the town, a cry of blood within the houses, and a frightened child caught his mother's skirt and hid himself in her cloak. Then war came forth from his hiding place. Athena, the virgin devised, and on the altars they slaughtered us. Within, in the vats, lay headless men. Young men cut down in their prime, 
thou wast the triumph crown of Greece, will sure bear children for her to bear. Grief and shame to our country. Look, Hecuba, it is Andromache and with her dear Astyanax, the son of Hector. Most sorrowful of women, where do you go? I go where my Greek masters take me. Oh, sorrow, our sorrow. Why should you weep? This sorrow is mine. Oh, God. What has come to me is mine. My children. Once we lived, not now. Gone is our good fortune, gone is Troy. And you bear it. And you bear it. Sons, noble sons, sorrow is here. Oh, sorrow is here. For me, for me. For the city in its shroud of smoke. Come, my husband, come to me. You cry out to my son, he's in the underworld. Come, protect your wife. You, whose blood stains Greek hands, firstborn of the sons I once bore to Priam, come, lead me to death. Death, oh, how deep a desire. Such is our pain for a city that has fallen, fallen for anguish, heaped upon anguish. The gods hated Troy from the time when your child Paris escaped death and for the sake of a hated marriage destroyed the city's tallest tower. Now vultures fill the sky like a dark cloud as the dead are piled by Athena's temple. She made Troy a city of slaves. Troy, my lost country. My tears fall for you. Look and see the end. Of the house where I bore my children. Oh, children. Your mother has lost her city and you, you have left her alone. Only grief is mine and mourning. Tears and more tears falling, falling. The dead, they have forgotten their pain. They weep no more. Tears are sweet in bitter grief, and sorrow's song is lamentation. Mother of the man whose spear brought death to Greeks unnumbered, mother to Hector, do you see how bad things are? I see God's hand that cast the mighty down and sets on high the lowly driven like cattle, captured in a raid. My child and I, the free, changed to a slave, like a dream turned nightmare. It is fearful to be helpless. Men have just now taken Cassandra, forced her from me. And still more for you, more than that. Number my sorrows, will you? Measure them, one comes, the next follows it. Polyxena lies dead upon Achilles' tomb, a gift to a corpse, to a lifeless thing. Polyxena. Polyxena. Oh, that is what Telthibius meant. I could not read his riddle or too plain. I saw her there and covered her dead body with my cloak and mourn for her. Murdered my child in their cruel sacrifice, you are gone, but how cruelly you died. She has died her death, and happier by far dying than I alive. Life cannot be what death is, child. Death is empty. Life has hope. Mother, hear a truer word. Now let me bring joy to your heart. I say to die is only not to be, and rather death than life with bitter grief.
they have no pain. They do not feel their wrongs. But whoever knows good fortune, when he has fallen in misfortune, is distraught with the memory of lost happiness. Polixena, your daughter, is dead. She no longer sees the light and does not know the wickedness that killed her. But I, who aspired to be well thought of, I, who have achieved some good measure of success, have met disaster. In Hector's house, I practiced every virtue women have perfected. First, I stayed home, suppressing all desire to leave. Endowed with good judgment, I did not need the company of other women for wisdom to rub off on me. Women can gossip, but not behind my doors. To my husband, I offered a quiet demeanor, a modest, respectful look, and I knew when to have the upper hand and when to yield. But when the report of these virtues reached the Greek camp, they were prelude to my demise. The moment I was taken captive, Achilles' son put in a bid for me. I shall be a slave to those who murdered. O oh, Hector, my beloved, shall I thrust him aside, open my heart to the man that comes to me, and be a traitor to the dead? But if I loathe my new husband, I shall earn the hate of my masters. Oh, Hector, my beloved, you were all to me. Wise, noble, mighty in wealth, in manhood both. You were my first man, but now you are nowhere, and I am to be taken across the sea to Greece, forced to wear a slave's collar. You are dead, Polixena, you weep for. What does she know of pain like mine? The living must have hope. Not I. Not any more. I will not lie to my own heart. We stand on the same point of pain. You mourn your ruin, and in your words I hear my own calamity. Those ships, I've never set foot on one, but I've heard of them, seen pictures of them. I know that when a storm comes, they think they can ride out. The sailors are at their best, one at the sail, another at the helm, others bail. But when the great ocean's raging overwhelms them, they yield to fate. They give themselves up to the racing waves. So in my many sorrows, I am dumb, I yield, I cannot speak. The great wave from God has conquered me. But, oh dear child, let Hector be, and let be what has come to him. Your many tears will never call him back. Give your honor now to him who is your master. Your sweet ways, let them allure him, so you will give cheer to your friends. And perhaps one day, this child, my child's own son, you may rear to manhood and great aid for Troy, and if you have more children, they might build her again. Troy. Once more a city. <sighs> but why again the servant of the Greeks? I hear him coming. Some new clan is here. Wife of Hector, the noblest man that was in Troy do not hate me. Against my will I come to tell you that the people and the kings have all resolved. What is it? Evil follows words like those. It has been decreed that this child, how can I say it? No. Don't tell me he's going to a different master than his mother. No man in Greece shall ever be his master. Do they want him to remain here? 
all that remains of Troy is ruins. I don't know how to tell you. What is bad words cannot make better. I feel that you are kind, but you have not good news. Your son must die. They will kill him. There, now you know. Kill Astyanix! I have heard an evil worse than being a slave in a stranger's bed. It was Odysseus. He spoke to all the Greeks. The mind cannot take this bleak information in. All that remains is noise. He said that a hero's son must not grow up, but he must be hurled down from Troy's own towers. Let it be. Do the wiser thing and accept it. Bear your pain with dignity. Don't cling to the boy. What else is there when you have no power and your strength is gone? Consider, you, since you have no choice, the situation. Your husband and your city are gone. And you are at the mercy of others who are quite capable of mounting an attack against a woman alone. That is why I advise you to submit. Abandon your love of battle. I urge you, do nothing that would bring hatred against the Greeks. For if you so much as utter a word to enrage the army, your son will be left unburied. Denied even the routine lament they would recite over his body. But if you keep silent, if you control yourself in your misfortune, the boy's body will not be left unburied and the Greeks might treat you less harshly. Oh, child, dearest to my heart, honor too much for your own good, you will die at the hands of enemies and leave your mother to grieve alone. Your father's high birth, which proved the source of safety for others, has been your undoing. Doomed is the marriage which I entered when I entered Hector's chamber with no thought that I would bear a son fit for Greek sacrifice, and not a son to rule rich Asia. There, there. You cannot know what waits for you. Why hold me with your hands so fast? Cling so fast to me? You little bird, flying to hide beneath my wings. And Hector will not come. He will not come up from the tomb, great spear in hand to save you. No, you will fall from the heights, a bitter fall that will break your neck. Oh, last and dearest embrace for a mother. How sweet the fragrance of you. This is what comes of all my efforts. All my labors that wore me out were for nothing. These breasts that nourished you with hope are dry. Now, hug and kiss your mother one last time. Come, lean against the woman who gave you life. Yes, wrap your arms around me. A kiss. Oh, you Greeks, you have found out ways to torture that are not Greek. A child, all innocent of wrongdoing, wished to kill him. <sighs> Helen, evil growth. You are no child of Zeus, as people say. Many of the fathers you were born of. Madness, hatred, red death. Whatever poison the earth brings forth. No child of Zeus. God curse you with those beautiful eyes that brought shame and ruin to the shining plains of Troy. Take him, seize him, cast him down if so you will. Feast on his flesh. 
The gods have turned against us. They have destroyed us. And I cannot... I cannot save my child from death. Take me to the ships. Troy. Troy, you have lost multitudes on account of one woman's lust. Come, boy, let's go. Leave your mother and mount the topmost ring of the towers. The vote has been cast. You must die. Take him away. A herald who brings such orders should be a man who feels no pity, no shame either. Not like me. Child, son of my poor son, they have taken your life for no reason as a prize of war, snatched from your mother and me. What can I do for you? We give you these blows to our head and blows to our breasts. That much lies in our power. Troy lost, now you all lost. The cup is full, why wait? Hasten on, swiftly on, to death. O oh, Telamon, king of Salamis, the island lashed by the waves, reaching flowers for the bees, where first you build your dwelling, slanting against the sacred citadels of Attica, where first Athena revealed the olive branch, silver and gray, stemming towards heaven to adorn glittering Athens. You went. He went to Troy, Troy, with the son of Alcmene, the archer, to prove your medal with him, to amity, Troy. Our city, our city, before Heracles left for Greece, when furious that the immortal horses promised him were withheld, he led the best men Greece could offer and rested the oar that breaks water on the open sea at the Samois, running smooth and easy. Then bound his ship's prows to the beachhead and took up his bow in his steady hand to strike down Laomedon and batter down the stone wall, cut straight and true by Apollo, devastating Troy with the dark red breath of fire. This is the second time the bloody spear toppled the walls and scattered the stones over the plains of Troy. And so, page boy and son of Laomedon, you walk in your great pride in heaven, pouring nectar into golden cups, keeping Zeus's drinking vessels full 
for nothing. For the city who is your mother burns, and a wailing rises from the sea's edge like the cry of a bird, fearful for her young, a wailing for warriors, a wailing for warriors, a wailing for warriors. Now the clear pools where you once bathed and running tracks and playing fields have vanished. But you, Ganymede, you flourish beside Zeus's throne, your face luminous and lovely in grace and ease, while below Greek spears bring prime domain to dust. Eros, Eros, desire and love, love and desire. A god once blazed through the chambers of Dardanus, and the eyes of the goddesses of the upper air shone on you. You lifted Troy's towers to heaven, you bound God and men. This is not a place to slander Zeus. The goddess of the day that men cherished cast a dark glance upon the earth while on her wild wings mounted, she saw the citadel shattered. She took a husband of the land. She bore him a child. She bore him up in a golden chariot, pulled by horses from the star-dazzled night, spawning great hopes for her homeland. But for the gods, Troy holds no more love potions. How bright the sunlight is today, this day, when I shall soon lay hands again on Helen, my wife. Many hardships have I, Menelaus, endured. I came to Troy and brought with me my army, not for that woman's sake, as some people suppose, but to retaliate against the guest who betrayed my hospitality and fled with my wife. Well, with Zeus' help, he has paid the price. He and his country fallen beneath Greek spears. I am come to get that woman from Sparta. I cannot speak her name who once was mine. Yet I know that she is numbered in these captive quarters with the other Trojan women. The men who toiled with me to win her back have given her to me to kill. Or else, if it pleases me, to take her back to Argos. And it has seemed to me her death in Troy is not the way. I will take her with swift oars, speeding on the ship, and give her to those in Greece to kill, whose dearest died because of her. Men, go, seize her, and drag her out by that long blood-drenched hair. And when the wind rises in the east, we will go with her to Greece. O oh, Zeus, you who are support for the earth, you who have your seat upon the earth, whoever you are, difficult to know, to grasp, Zeus, whether nature's necessity or mortal intelligence, I call upon you. Traveler upon a silent path, you direct all mortal beings toward justice. What is this? Why do you address the gods like this? You have my praise, Menelaus, if you intend to kill your wife. But be careful not to look on her again, lest she ensnare you with desire. For she magnetizes men's eyes, destroys cities, sets houses on fire from within. She's adept at the black arts. I know her, you know her, so do all those who suffered on her behalf.
Man, alas. These things might well make a woman fear. Your men with violence have driven me from my room, have laid their hands upon me. I have no doubt that you hate me, but still I wish to speak. I must know. Have the Greeks made up their minds? Have you? Am I to live? The whole army put your death into the hands of the man you wronged. It was unanimous. Am I allowed to speak against the charge? To show you if I die that I shall die most wronged and innocent? I have not come to argue with you, but to kill you. Hear her out, Menelaus. She must not die unheard. But then let me answer her. The evil that she did in Troy, you do not know. But I will tell the story. And that added to the sum of your complaints will condemn her to death beyond any appeal. That means delay. Still, if she wants to speak, she may. I grant this because of what you say. Not for her sake. She can be sure of that. And perhaps, no matter if I speak the truth or not, you will not talk to me since you believe I'm an enemy. Still, I will try to answer what I think you will say if you spoke your minds and my wrong shall be heard as well as yours. First, who began these evils? She did. The day she gave birth to Paris. Who next was guilty? King Priam, who decreed the child should live and ruin Troy and me. Paris, the hateful, the firebrand. What happened then? Listen and learn. This Paris had to judge a contest that joy three goddesses. Athena promised he should lead the Trojans to victory and lay all Greece in ruins. And Hera said, if he taught her the fairest, he will make him lord of Europe and of Asia. But Aphrodite, well, she praised my beauty. Astonishing, she said, and promised him that she will give me to him if he judged that she was loveliest. Then see what happened. She won. And so my bridal brought all Greece great good. No strangers rule you, no foreign spears, no tyrants. How? Oh. It was well for Greece, but not for me. Sold? for my beauty and reproached besides when I deserve a crown. But to the point, you will say, I have not yet spoken to the most obvious judge at all, that I stole away from your home in secret. Paris. Paris came accompanied by a goddess. No minor deity. When he came to me, he found me alone in your house because you, you fool, have left me there in Sparta when you set sail for Crete. <laughs> Not you, but my own self, I ask. What was there in my heart that I went with him, a strange man, and forgot my home and country? Not I, but Aphrodite. Punish her, be mightier than Zeus who rules the other god, but is her slave. She is my absolution. One thing in seem injustice, you might say. When Paris died and went out of the grave, and when no God cared who is in my bed, I should left his house and gone to the Greeks 
just I try to do how many times the kid keepers and sentinels on the rapids are my witness. Time after time they caught me in the act of stealing away with ropes hanging from the battlements to the ground. The Trojans then no longer wanted me, but the man who next took me, and by force, you'll never let me go. And alas, my husband, must I die as at your hands? Do you think that's right? Is that your justice? I was forced by violence. I lived a life that had no joy, no triumph. In bitterness, I lived a slave. If you wish to be omnipotent, go ahead. But it defeats your papa says to ask for my death. Come, queen, defend your children and your country. Her soft persuasive words are deadly. She speaks so fair and is so vile. A terrible thing. Her goddesses will fight on my side when I show her for the liar that she is. Not Hera, not virgin Athena, do I think would ever stoop to folly so low as to sell their cities. Hera, sell her Argos, Athena, Athens, to be the Trojan slave, playing like silly children there on Ida, each one in her insolence, demanding the prize for beauty. Beauty. What could have made Hera, a goddess herself, contract a sudden passion for beauty? To claim a better husband than Zeus? And was Athena out to marry one of the gods? It was she who asked her father for the gift of virginity and steered shy of men's beds. Do not make fools of the gods to prettify your vice. No one of every, any sense will believe you. And Aphrodite, did you say? Aphrodite must take my son to Menelaus' house. Why? Could she not sit quietly in heaven and steer you and all your town on to Troy? My son was beautiful exceedingly. You looked on him and that look was enough. No need of any goddess. All forms of human folly make their way under Aphrodite's name. It was my son. You saw him in his eastern dress, all bright with gold, and you were mad with love. At home you lived a, lived a Spartan life. You hoped that once out of Sparta you would find in Troy a city flowing with streams of gold, a sumptuous city to satisfy your dreams of extravagance. Menelaus' palace had grown too small for such dreams. By force, you say he took you? You cried out. Where? No one in Sparta heard you. Young Castor was there, and his brother not yet among the stars. You came to Troy, the Greeks dogging your tracks, and there was a conflict. Whenever Menelaus had the advantage over the Trojans, you sang his praises, hoping to pain my son with his great rival for your love. But when the Trojans' luck was running, Menelaus was dirt in your eye. This was your practice. You kept your focus on fortune, looking to follow her ways, not virtues. And now you talk of ropes, of letting yourself down in secret over the wall, longing to go. Who, who found you so? Was there a noose around your neck, a sharp knife in your hand, ways in which any honest woman would have found who loved the husband she'd lost? Often and often I would tell you, go, my child, my sons will find them, other wives go. I will help you pass the lines to the Greek ships, go. End this war between our foes and us. But 
this was bitter to you. In Paris' house you had your insolent ways. You liked to see the Eastern men fall at your feet. This was great. These were great things to you. Look at the way you dress. Your ornaments. Is this any way to meet your husband? You should not dare to breathe the same air as him. Men should spit upon you, humbly in rags, trembling and shivering with shaven head. So should you come with shame at last, instead of shamelessness for all the wickedness you did. King, one word more and I am done. Give Greece a crown. Be worthy of yourself. Establish this law as law for all women that whoever betrays her husband pays the ultimate price, death. Menelaus, son of an ancient house, now show that you are worthy of your fathers. The Greeks called you a woman, <laughs> shamed you with that reproach. Be strong, be noble, punish her. I see it all as you do. She left my house because she wanted to, went to a stranger's bed. This talk of Aphrodite, grand words, nothing more. Go, death is near. Men there are waiting for you. In their hands are stones. Die, a small price for the Greeks' long suffering. You shall not any more dishonor me. She murdered. Think of those who fought beside you of their children too. Never betray them. Hear that prayer. Enough. Old woman, she's nothing to me. Men, take her to the ships and keep her safe until we sail. But not with you. She must not set foot on your ship. Why? A weight too heavy for it? A lover once, a lover always. Not so. When what he loved has gone. But it shall be as you would have it, not on the same ship. The advice is good. But when she gets to Greece, she shall die a death as hard as her heart. And in the end, she shall become a teacher, a lesson in restraint for all women. And so, Zeus, your temple in Ilium, your altar of frankincense, they're all given to the Greeks. The flame from the honey, the corn and the oil, the smoke from the mirror, floating upwards, the holy citadel, and Ida, the mountain where the ivy grows, and rivers of, from snow, Rass through the glens and the boundary wall of the world where the first sunlight falls, the blessed home of the dawn. The sacrifice is gone, 
and the glad call of dancers and the prayers at evening to the gods that last the whole night long. Gone too the golden images and the twelve moons to Trojans holy. Do you care? Do you care? Do you heed these things, O oh God, from your throne in high heaven? My city is perishing, ending in fire and onrushing flame. Oh, dear one, oh, my husband, you're dead. And you wander unburied, uncared for, while overseas the ships and carry me, winged swift ships darting onwards on to the land where the riders love to Argus, where towers built of stone by giants reach the sky. <gasps> children, our children, at the gate, they're crying, crying, calling to us with tears, mother, mother, I'm all alone, where are you? They're taking me away to a black ship and I cannot see you. Where? Where? To Holy Salamis, with swift oars dipping? Or to the crest of Corinth, the city of two seas, where the gates King Pelops built for his dwelling stand? Oh, if only far out to see the crushing thunder of Zeus would fall down, down on Menelaus' ship, crushing down upon her oars the Aegean wild firelight. Heat was drove me from Troy. He is driving me in tears over to Greece to slavery. And Helen, too, with her mirrors of gold, looking and wondering at herself as pleased as a girl. May she never come to the hearth of her father. May she never see the city of brazen doors, the temple of goddess Athena. Oh, evil marriage that brought shame to Greece, the great, and to the rivers of Troy sorrow and suffering. Before new sufferings are grown old, come another new. Look on happy wives of Troy, the dead SDNX. They threw him from the tower as one might pitch a ball and bear his corpse here. Hecuba, there is a last ship with oars poised to sweep the sea. Agamemnon's oars already dipped in the water, primed by news of his father's father being driven from his land by his own son. Send the booty won by Achilles' son to the fog-bound shore. My eyes filled with tears for Andromache as she cast off. She calling for her lost country, speaking to Hector's grave. And she asked that this child be laid in the earth this son of your Hector, fell from the walls, the breath broken from his body. She asked that he be delivered to your arms so that you could wrap his body in a robe and garland his head with whatever remains to you. For she is gone. Her Lord's haste kept her from giving her child rights of the grave. When you have dressed the body in death's garments and laid oath, earth over him, we'll set sail. Now let us move on. I've saved you one part of this labor. I've washed the body. I washed the blood from his wounds. Now I'm going to break the earth and dig his grave and hope that your labors and mine will soon become one as our ship begins the long voyage home.
You Greeks, your spears are sharp, but not your wits. You feared a child. You murdered him. A strange murder. You were frightened then. You thought he might build up our ruined Troy. And yet, when Hector fought and thousands at his side, we fell beneath you. And now when all is lost, the city captured Trojans dead. A little child like this made you afraid. The fear that comes when reason goes away. Myself, I do not wish to share it. Beloved, what a death has come to you. If you had fallen fighting for our city, if you had known strong youth and love and godlike power, if you had known happiness, if there is happiness anywhere, but you saw and you knew, but in your soul you did not know, and what was in your house you could not use. Poor little one. How savagely Apollo's walls, our ancient towers, have torn the curls your mother's fingers wound here, where the broken bone grins white. <laughs> no, I cannot. Dear proud hands, same dear hands as your father's had, how loosely now you fall. Dear proud lips, forever silent. False word you spoke to me when you would run and jump into my bed and call me sweet names and tell me, Grandmother, when you are dead, I shall cut off a great lock of hair and march with my soldiers all past your tomb. It is not you, Prince, who will bury me, but I who must bury you in your youth. I, an old woman, dispossessed of her city and relations, must lay your battered body in the ground. Oh, how you would run to greet me, and I would nurse you in my arms, and oh, so sweet to watch you sleep. All gone. Men secure. What could a poet carve upon your tomb? A child lies here whom the Greeks feared and slew. Our Greece should boast of that. Come, lay this garment over our dead child. It is all we can offer. God has not left us much to make a show with. Men secure when once good fortune comes. Fools, fools. Fortune's ways here now, there now. She springs away, back and away. An idiot stands. No one is ever always fortunate. These women are bringing some spoil of war, a garment to adorn his body. Child, your father's mother places this victor's garment of lost wealth over you. You have won no victory in the horse race or in archery. Helen, whom the gods loathe, has forever wrested these joys from you, destroyed your house, taken your life. Your words tear at me. My heart goes out to Astyanax, once lord of my city. So, on your wedding day, I would have dressed you the highest princess in the east, your bride. Now, on your body, I must lay the raiment, all that is left of the splendor that is Troy's. Aye, aye, the earth will swallow you, child, like sorrow's bitter seed. Mother, lament. Lament, indeed. Weeping for all the dead. Bitter tears. You sorrows that can never be forgotten. I heal your wounds with these wrappings. Ah, in words only, not in truth, a poor physician. But soon, among the dead, your father will care for you. Hecuba, speak to us. What does it mean? Only this, 
the gods would bring pain for me and pain for Troy. Our sacrificial smoke never reached heaven. And yet, had the gods not bowed us down, not laid us low in dust, none would have sung of us, nor told our wrongs in stories men will listen to forever. Go, lay our dead in his poor grave with these last gifts of death given to him. I think those that are dead care little how they are buried. It is we, the living, our vanity. Poor Andromache, her high hopes were placed on you and they are broken. They called you happy at your birth, a good man's son. Your death was miserable exceedingly. Look, what do I see? Can there be some new evil, something still unknown? Captain's attention. <laughs> you have been given charge to burn this city. <gasps> Hurry the fire on. Do not let your torches sleep. When once the town is level with the ground, then off for home and glad goodbye to Troy. Trojan women, pay attention so I do not have to repeat myself. When the trumpet sounds, start moving toward the Greek ships to embark. Old woman, I'm sorriest for you. Do follow when Odysseus' men come to get you. He drew you. You must leave here as his slave. I have now reached the frontier of my suffering. Grief can go no further. I leave with my city in flames. But hurry, old feet, if you can, a little nearer, so I can see my poor town say goodbye to her. You are so proud a city in all the East, the proudest. Now your name, the whole world knew, will be taken from you. They are burning you and leading us away, their slaves. Oh, God, why do I say that word, the gods I prayed? They never listened quick into the fire. Troy, I will die with you, death then, O oh, beautiful. Ancient of days, our country's lord, father who made us, do you see your children's sufferings? He sees, but the mighty city is a city no more. All that remains of Troy is a name. Troy glitters, the citadel blazes, the buildings, the high temples, to palisades all burn. Our land, fallen in warfare, vanishes like a bird, lifting on wings of smoke to the edge of vision. Fire rages through hungry halls, swept on by torches. <laughs> Children, here, here, your mother is calling. Cry to the dead, they do not hear. My knees are stiff, but I must kneel. <laughs> now strike the ground with both my hands. We too fall upon our knees and call upon our dead husbands underground. They are taking us away like cattle. Pain, old pain, taken away to a house of bondage. Priam, my husband, without a loved one to dig your grave. You are dead and know nothing of my destruction. At least you are spared that grief. He was good, and the wicked killed him. Dear houses of the gods, great city. Fall and be forgotten, the earth is kind. The dust is rising, spreading out like a great wing of smoke. I cannot see my house. The name has vanished from the land, and we are gone. One here, one there. 
and Troy is gone forever. <gasps> Did you hear that? Did you hear that? The fall of Troy. Earthquake and flood and the city's end. Trembling body, old weak limbs, you must carry me on. Carry me on to the new day of slavery. Farewell, dear city. Farewell, my country where once my children lived. Now we must go and face whatever awaits us. On to the ships. There below, the Greek ships wait. <laughs> <laughs>